Hey guys, Crypto Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at a filter. So basically what happened is one of my subscribers who also lives in Tokyo contacted me about a filter that they uh, bought from one of the dealers here. The filter is this one. It is the Optolong L Extreme filter with a little uh, contact information at the back telling them that if they have any issues they should contact Optolong Spoiler alert, they should contact up along. Uh, the subscriber contacted me telling me that uh, they were using that filter and that weirdly enough, it wasn't getting a lot of Oxygen 3 data. Uh, HLV was fine, Oxygen 3 was meh or bleh. And does that sound weirdly familiar? <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. And I don't want to um, to single out Optolong or anything like that at all in here. We've seen so many narrowband filters um, not be within their specifications. Okay, so I take everything with a grain of salt anyway, right? So I wanted to make sure that this was the case and the subscriber also wanted to make sure that this was the case. And as many of you know, I have this little thing from Goya Lab, a French startup company. Specifically, this is a spectrometer meaning that using this um, and um, an LED panel effectively, I'm able to measure the band pass of uh, filters, including narrow band filters. And of course, I measured uh, my subscriber's uh, L-Extreme filter. Of course, I made sure to uh, calibrate my spectrometer very precisely with a mercury argon lamp and also with a neon uh, lamp. And uh, I double checked that the values that I was getting out of the spectrometer for both my mercury argon and eon lamp um, spikes, uh, like emission spikes, uh, were correct both before and after the measurement. So I'm uh, pretty sure that my measurement is accurate. Uh, we've previously been able to uh, quantify it as being accurate within roughly 0.6 nanometers. Uh, based on uh, measurements of known filters, filters that have been measured on professional spectrometers. Um, so anyway, let's look at the results. So here are, here are the results. Now, um, I'm just going to be um, quick about it. Uh, about it. So first, uh, first thing to remember is, as always, with my spectrometer, because the uh, window of measurement is fairly wide, uh, the, the top transmission is actually not quite uh, reliable. It is lower than it is in reality. So I can only compare with other seven nanometer filters and uh, it is good. Like in terms of transmission, there is no problem with this filter. Uh, H alpha is actually a bit lower than oxygen three. Typically I see the reverse, but yeah, okay, that, that works. H alpha is anyway super strong, so not a big deal. Um, and the band passes themselves, they're, they're pretty much 7 nanometers. So up, as per the specs, we don't really have any issue there either. Um, now let's look at the H-alpha band pass. If I look at the H-alpha band pass, we can see like 656.5, which is basically where the H-alpha uh, wavelength is, is pretty much at the middle of the uh, band pass, which is good. It means that this uh, L-Extreme filter will be uh, perfectly usable and serviceable for uh, normal optics as long as they don't get too fast. So I would say um, up to a focal ratio of four, so F4 and above, this filter for H-alpha is perfectly fine. Uh, when you get into faster optics like Hyperstar um, or Raza optics, it would be less good. But you know, that's exactly as expected and uh, like within line with the specifications of the filter. So up to now, no worries. But as you know, the subscribers didn't contact me about H-alpha, they contacted me about Oxygen 3. So let's look at Oxygen 3. And Oxygen 3, we can see that the middle of the band pass is roughly at 498 nanometers. And that, my friends, is bad. Uh, because the band pass we're trying to capture is uh, 500.7, which in our case is more like here. So yeah, like roughly be between those two points there. So we are like already like 
between this and this, this and this. There we are. So we're already like low on the curve. We're like compare if the tip of the curve is like 100%, we're like down to 80% already of the uh, of the total uh, possible transmission for that curve. And there's also the blue shift when you go to faster and faster optics. It's less significant for oxygen three than it is for H alpha, but it means that maybe at like F3 or F F4 we'll be down to like 40%, 50% transmission. And that's actually really bad because oxygen three is weak to begin with. If you make it even weaker by having a displaced band pass, uh, it's not great. Now there is somewhat of a redeeming quality around 495. There is a second oxygen three wavelength. So like you can see that basically the, the, this particular filter capture both at roughly the same level. So the 500.7 and the 495 are both captured at the same level, which, you know, per se, it's not bad. And even in, like if it were uh, used on a slow telescope like F7 or higher, so F7 to F10 uh, or F20, whatever, uh, this would be perfectly fine because the, the oxygen three wavelengths at 495 point something is uh, roughly, for most targets, it's roughly one third of the strengths as the main uh, the main band pass, so we, we capture both pretty well. But the problem is, like, if I go to f5 optics or f4 optics, then like really the main band pass that we sorry the main wavelength that we want to capture is really attenuated. Uh, the secondary band pass is like almost I would say at its peak of transmission, but that's really not what we're what we're looking for. I mean, this is like far less than ideal. And uh, if we look at the specifications of the filter, the the official charts or graphs from Optolong, we can see that they don't intend to be like playing around the main wavelengths and secondary wavelengths of oxygen three. They really want to be centered on the main wavelengths, which isn't happening here. And that is another example of the astro lottery that's going on. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised, I'm not shocked, and Optolong is certainly not alone. Uh, the good thing is, for now, I've heard only good things about their newer filters, like the L-Ultimate, as well as the 3 nanometer bandpass uh, SHO. Uh, but then a subscriber will also send me uh, SHO 3 nanometer filters from Optolong for me to measure. So we'll see what happens when, uh, when I get my hands on those. For now, my advice for my, to my subscriber will be to uh, do exactly what the back of the filter says, which is contact Optolong. And uh, if Optolong is open to admitting that there is something faulty with their filter, and there is, uh, then, the, uh, then the subscriber, hopefully Optolong can get in touch with the dealer in Japan that my subscriber uh, bought the filter from and arrange for um, a replacement. And that, my friends, is why you should be measuring your filters. Uh, so if there's any subscriber in the Tokyo area or in Japan, or even abroad who's willing to pay for the shipping costs, my subscriber insisted to pay for this uh, measurement. So we agreed on the cost of uh, 5,000 Japanese yen per filter, uh, although for like a set of three filters, I'd uh, be discounting that. So if anyone's interested, let me know. With that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.